This is the Calvin D Project, where we interview interesting people driven to change the trajectories of those they serve through learning, teaching, and writing. I want to thank you for being here. We're pleased to welcome Carnell Davis Jr. out of Washington, D.C. Make sure you stick around because some of the most powerful content is the advice portion that's at the end. So right before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hit that bell notification icon so you can get more episodes like this one. Mr. Carnell Davis, tell me a little bit about yourself and your ministry. I'm a down-home Southern guy from the South, kind of laid back. Most people think that I am just all over the place and I can be. When I'm at home, I'm just a, I'm a homebody. I like being at home, watching TV, and I'm just a down-home, down-to-earth person. My ministry, most of them are the same way. Just laid back people who love God. You catch us out, you know, bowling alley or skating, you know, especially when we all get get a chance to get together outside of ministry. Just some good down home people. How did you get your start here to gospel music? Well, you can say I came out the womb in it. Okay. <laughs> I had no other choice but to do music. My dad was a minister of music of our church. And my mother was one of the lead vocals in our church choir. When I came out, you know, I was looking at them. But it just came natural. That's how I really got started with music. As far as the industry, I got my first start introduction into the industry. Another fellow artist, Ron Summers, who is now out of Baltimore. At the time he was living in Houston, he had formed a community choir, Sounds of Levi. I was still in high school. My mother allowed me to go and be a part of his singing aggregation. And that was sort of my introduction into the gospel industry, is what Minister Ron Summers. What would you say is your style as an artist? A lot of people will try to associate me with Ricky Diller because I sing with Ricky Diller. I think we are in between like a Ricky Diller, James Hall, Orlando Draper. Orlando Draper was one of my favorite directors. So we kind of in that whole churchy mix of gospel. You mentioned Ricky Dillard being a member of the New Generation Chorale. How did that come about for you? I had formed my choir back in 2004. I had always been an admirer of Ricky Dillard since a kid, watching them on the Stellar Wars and seeing them at various live performances that they would do if they came down to the South. In 2005, I believe, he had opened up auditions outside of Chicago, where the choir is based from. I said, well, let me go in and audition for that. I didn't tell anybody I was going to audition. I just bought a plane ticket and went to audition. And for the funny thing was there was two auditions. There were auditions for lead vocals and auditions for background and for the choir. I went to the wrong audition, thinking I was going to the choir audition, but ended up going to the lead vocal audition in Atlanta and Ricky was the one who was running that audition and for the other audition was Larry Jones who serves as assistant choir director. Ricky came in and called my name and I came in and I sung a hymn. I think it was maybe I've like saved by his power divine something like that. I remember him telling me he said this song sounds like it's very low for you so he had me take the the song up and 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 he said oh yeah you you you'll fit right in so the rest is history. So I've been a member of New G since 2005. You also operate in the worship leader space. What was the story behind Incorporated to Praise? I started Incorporated to Praise based upon a mistake or something that I didn't do. I was youth minister music at my church and every year we would have a Memorial Day concert. And every day, every year for that concert, we would have artists come in, a well-known artist to come in to be our future guest. Well, this particular year, I forgot to do that. It was last minute, so I was thinking to myself, I said, okay, what I'm gonna do? I decided, I said, well, I'm gonna form a choir or a group of singers and we'll be the special guests for that concert. I called some people that I went to high school with, some people I knew that sung around the city. And then even them, they invited some people to the very first rehearsal. When we came together, I think we maybe had maybe about three or four rehearsals before the actual concert. And when we sung for that particular concert, it was it was something. And I remember my dad telling me, he said, Colonel, you really have something. You should continue it. And but it was not a desire of mine to to continue that. But after we had that first performance, then we started getting calls to go sing here and there and everywhere. And sometimes we'd be singing three or four times a weekend. Here we are. Here we are 18 years later and still going. 
So God has been good to us. With several chart-topping songs receiving heavy radio play, yourself and ITP were nominated for a Stella Award by being a part of Ernest Pugh's Gospel Rising Stars project with the song, Where the Spirit of the Lord Is, and that's major. How was that experience at the time for you as an artist? As an artist, when we got nominated, it's very ironic, when we got nominated, we were on sabbatical because at that time I had just moved to DC. I wanted to do something new in my life. I felt like my life was going in the same circle, doing the same stuff all over again, you know, same thing over and over and over again. And even with the choir, they kind of got in the mode where, you know, they kind of slacked off. It really wasn't coming out to sing and things like that. When I started the choir, we were all very, very young. In that time, people had got married, went off to school, started families, you know, got careers and stuff instead of, you know, regular jobs, they got careers and stuff. Think of singing, we were all coming into adulthood. I told them, I said, okay, let's take a couple, a year or two or three, let's take some time off and then we'll revisit this in a couple of years to see if this is what we want to continue to do. And um, when we got nominated for that Stella Award, it was like, wow, it's not nothing that I thought would happen. But when Ernest, Ernest Pugh asked me for the song, I said, sure. I mean, we had already recorded it. I was like, sure. You, I mean, not thinking that it would do anything. And here it is. It got nominated for a Stella Award. And I was just, I was just blown away. You know, that is a huge accomplishment. The Stella Awards, which, you know, for us, we call it the Gospel Grammys because that is the, one of the biggest awards in gospel music. So I was elated. It was, it was a dream come true. Dream come true. Congratulations on our order. You and four other standout directors received director honors, being recognized at the Eddie Awards. Now, how was that for you? That was a huge honor for anybody to see something in me with what I do with my community choir as well as my church choir because I do work in the music department at my church. For them to see something in me that deserved honor, I was I was humbled and honored to go. I was so appreciative to the Eddie Awards and Mr. Eddie Ford for honoring me. It just gave me just a little boost to keep going because a lot of times in ministry, sometimes you feel like what you do can be overlooked and sometimes it can, but for somebody to come back and say, thank you for what you've done, you've inspired me. That was a, that was really big for me. And it really encouraged me to keep on going and not to, you know, not to give up on this journey. Most recently, we talked about the Stella Awards a little, a little while ago, and you were able to participate in the most recent Stella Awards. How was that experience for you? Oh, it was awesome. This is not my first time going to the Stella Awards with Ricky, but to go back this time again was a huge honor because Ricky was being honored as well for the James Cleveland Award. We did his tribute. So to be able to go and to pay tribute and homage to someone who has opened doors for me. I was elated and I was happy to go and just to say thank you because it was so much going on that weekend. He was being honored and then we recorded again for our anniversary. So it was just it was just a big weekend. But it, just to be, to be able to say thank you to someone who has paved the way for you, which was a, which was an awesome, awesome, awesome um, thing to do. So I'm glad that I was able to go just to say thank you. For those that are not familiar, what can you tell us about the United Music of Arts Conference? The United Music and Arts Conference is a co conference started by Professor Craig Hayes out of Trinity, New Jersey. Many of you may remember him and his choir, uh, Craig Hayes and the United Voices. They had some real big hits, you know, throughout the 90s. It's his take, I believe, uh, he's did a conference back in the 90s, but he's brought it back. And I'm glad that he did because I was able to go and to be a part of it. And he reminded me so much of the Edwin Hawkins Music Art Seminar, which I was also part of while Edwin was still living. Just to be there and to see the different artists come in and join in and just to get knowledge and encouragement. And because, like I said earlier, as ministers, we can give, 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 and not necessarily it's being, we're being replenished. But to be a part of that conference, I am so happy that Professor Hayes it has, has started that music and arts seminar just for the network and for, 
for the different types of new music that these songwriters are writing today. And you know, to, you know, to get pointers because there were a lot of legends in the room. Uh, case in point, A. Jeffrey the Valley. We know from the from the seventies, eighties, and nineties, writing some really big hits, giving us history and giving us pointers on songwriting. So it was it was just wonderful. So I do believe that this is something that we'll be doing annually. And so I admonish anybody that's um, that's a new artist coming up to to look out for information for next year's conference because I promise you would not be disappointed. So it's, and it's just not for artists, for radio announcers, for pastors, musicians, just coming together, having a good time and, 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 and gleaning from each other. CCM music and gospel music. Mm. Now, what's your opinion on labeling contemporary Christian music as gospel music? You really want my opinion? A real opinion. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the great debate. The great debate. I feel... And this is just my opinion. I, I feel that there is definitely a separation of the two. Gospel is gospel. There's a sound that comes with black gospel. And there's a sound that comes from contemporary Christian music. There's two different palettes. And there's two different sounds. I mean, it's just like if you, if you want Mexican food or do you want soul food or do you want Italian food? Or you want so there's two different sounds and two different feelings. And so trying to intertwine the two, I'm not a real big fan of it. I feel that each has its own merit to stand up on. You can never get away from the sound of gospel because it is our heritage. And um, I know this new generation is is really grabbing hold to the CCM, which uh, there is there is nothing wrong with that because I believe every genre evolves as time goes on because you know we're even in gospel now we're not singing the style of music that my grandmother may have been listening to because you know she was probably listening to Thomas Dorsey and then my parents were listening to Edwin Hawkins and the Clark sisters and see now my generation is kind of in between that and even the new generation don't even know who those people are. You know, they don't know about hymns and they don't know about anthems and traditional songs and things like that because they're not being taught. I feel that we are kind of dropping the ball on that and in introducing it because there's a feeling that comes with a hymn. I was always taught, you know, if you if you don't have nothing else to sing, you know, pull out a hymn and I it, it works every single time every single time if i pull out if i go somewhere and sing if i pull out greatest greatest our faithfulness or blessed assurance or saved by his power divine just pulling out a hymn tis so sweet to trust in jesus i surrender all you know there there's a certain feeling that you get especially when you're going through and you pull out those songs with those messages they will do something for you Hey, the hair standing up on your back, on your neck. I'm telling you, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm telling you, yes, sir, because those songs, well, some of those songs was written out of pain. And we often talk that sometimes our struggles are not meant for us. Our struggles are meant for somebody coming down the line so that your testimony and a blessing to somebody else, you know, down the line. And that is proof with hymns today. You can never get away from gospel and the traditions of of our black church. Now still you can incorporate, but never get away from the sound of gospel, of gospel. Now, just out of curiosity, which of your songs ministers to you the most? Actually, where well, the Spirit of the Lord is. That's um, I've written a couple, but that one, I remember writing that song. I was in a, I was in a very, very, very low place. My mind went back to the scripture, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I started doing my research on the word liberty. Liberty is to be free and freedom. So whatever you need, whether it is healing in your mind, in your spirit, or whatever you're going through, if you just get in his presence and put block out all that stuff and just get in his spirit in his presence and let him minister to you, there is liberty, there is healing, there is hope, there is joy, there is happiness. All the fruits of the spirit is there if you just get into his spirit. So that has to be one of my top favorite songs of mine that I have written where the spirit of the Lord is. What can we expect to hear from your latest song, Lily of the Valley? Uh, Lily of the Valley, I co-wrote this song, me and another artist from Houston, Texas, Pastor Chad Stevenson. We co-wrote this song maybe about 20 years ago. I had been sitting on it. Going back to the previous question that you asked, well, the one before that, about the gospel and the CCM style of singing, 
Lily Valley is very, very gospel because I feel that we are getting away from that with the industry. And so it's very Sunday morning church, choir robes, all of that good stuff. It's one of them songs that you can just pass the mic and to any good lead and they can just take it home. It's one of those good um, songs because I feel that's what I haven't heard a song like that on radio in a minute. And so I was like, OK, well, let me pull let me pull this one out for the next single. I really feel that everybody will really, really like it. It's something that's easy that you can teach to your church choirs. I feel that, you know, it'll be the next good church hit. What would it look like if you were putting together a starting lineup for a concert of independent artists? Who's on your starting five? My starting five. Ooh, there's a quartet group. I love quartet music. That's another that's another genre that I think we're getting away from is is the good gospel quartet. There's a quartet out of Cincinnati, Ohio called Restored. As a female quartet group, they're very, very good. So I'll say them. I have two fellow choir master brothers, Patrick Riddick and Divine Worship. Chris Irving, Patrick Riddick's from Virginia Beach. Chris Irving and Abraham's descendant, they're from Charlotte. Let's see, that's one, two, three. Let's see one more. I need a good solo artist. See Ashley Brown. She's from uh, she's from Mississippi. And then of course, closing out, yours truly, Carnell Davis, and incorporate the praise. Okay. So I think those five will. Be, I think that'll be a good concert. Three choirs, a quartet, and a solo artist. What new projects that are you working on that you can share with us? I'm wrapping up production with my own, my own record, and we we're, we're hoping to get it out soon. We just got through doing a lot of traveling. So we're not going to do too much traveling here now. I want to really concentrate on getting this record done so we can um, have something to travel with. Amen. Praise God. If there is someone out there that may not be getting pushed to be a lead vocalist or there's somebody that's being put on a box, what words of encouragement would you like to give to an expiring artist? Mm, that's a very tricky question <laughs> because I do uh, in my vo- in my core workshops that I do around the around the country I try I tell people that every background singer is not meant to lead and every leader is not necessarily meant to do background just because you lead in your church choir may not necessarily mean that you're ready to lead to the to the masses I learned that from Ricky Dillard himself he you know he's quick to tell us that that stage is not forgiving and that stage can be very very mean put yourself out there you become vulnerable and if you're not ready for the backlash because everybody's not gonna like you that let's say you 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 become a solo artist and you put out a single or you go you create a video and it ends up on Facebook or ends up on Instagram or ends up on YouTube everybody's not gonna like you so can you handle the negativity that's going to come your way I believe the scripture that says your gift will make room for you when it's time for God to put you in that position if that's what he wants you he'll do it a lot of times we put ourselves in situations we have no business being in. <laughs> we have no business because we're not prepared the Bible says study to show that self approved we just think because we have a willing heart that God's going to be yeah he's going to bless us but we God needs something to work with too so you got to do your due diligence and your practice and your research and all of that stuff to prepare so when you go to the masses that you are, you're ready to go. Because even in our beginnings, there were a lot of mistakes that we made. And it's, you know, there's growing pains. And we learn from our mistakes and we try to come back better. But if you are a person who is not someone who likes constructive criticism or somebody uh, sharpening your gift because iron sharpens iron, if you're not that type of person, then you may not be necessarily ready for that center stage. However, if you have the gift and you know you have the gift and you feel that you're being put into a box, find somebody who can help you to cultivate and to help your gift blossom so somebody can take notice to your gift. Because that's all it is. People don't know what lies beneath unless they see it. So if you have the desire to direct or if you have the desire to to sing lead, then find somebody to help you to um, to work on that gift and maybe, you know, record yourself and put a video out on Facebook and let it catch some traction and see what it what you have is really something that's worth investing in. For my audience that is wanting to connect, 
How do we find you? You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Carnell Davis Jr. My name is spelled with one L. Most people put two L's and you won't find me that way. So it's C-A-R-N-E-L Davis Jr. Make sure you put Jr. Because if you just put Carnell Davis, you may go to my dad. And uh, he's on Facebook. That's shockingly, but he's he's on there. And then Instagram, my handle is Sir Carnell Davis. If you want to follow the choirs, Carnell and I-T-P-C-A-R-N-E-L. A-N-D-I-T-P That's the choir's Instagram We're all over YouTube We're on Spot We're all on the digital uh, platforms iTunes Amazon Music Spotify Apple Music We're all over the place So just search us Carnell Davis And Incorporated to Praise Carnell Davis Jr. I want to thank you for being a guest on the Calvin D Project podcast this week. For my audience, be sure to connect with Mr. Davis on social media and to also check out his music. For those who haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon so you can get more episodes like this one. And thank you again for listening to the Calvin D Project.